<clears throat> Madam Speaker, everywhere in Wisconsin, people are asking for help to cut the costs for gasoline and diesel fuels. People are having a tough time just keeping their heads above water, paying one out of four of their paychecks for gas just to get to work. We must do everything possible to make certain gas and oil become more affordable. And during the past year, I've been listening to everyone involved in the oil industry, and one thing is clear. Current oil prices are not explainable by normal marketplace forces of supply and demand. Why are gas prices so high? Well, there are many reasons, including increased demand from China and India and the declining value of the dollar. But these reasons alone do not explain today's surging oil prices. Ignoring cries for help from ordinary people, President Bush and Vice President Cheney, the two oil men in the White House, have been unwilling to investigate the anti-competitive activities of big oil companies and speculators in large investment banks. And their only response to the surge in oil prices has been to beg to beg for more addictive oil from the Arabian kings in the Middle East. Even though last year, as we emptied our pockets, Saudi Arabia enjoyed a windfall of $500 billion. We cannot afford to follow the advice of the White House oil men and their supporters, for if we do, we will become not just bankrupt, but a nation of beggars. Aside from begging, White House oil men also offered more of the same ideas that caused this mess in the first place. More drilling rights for big oil. Their old school drilling idea is short-sighted for it requires years, years, not weeks, years to pump, explore, refine, and deliver gasoline and diesel fuels. We need gas price relief now, not next year, and here's how we get started. First, we need leaders who will stand up to big oil and provide the necessary oversight to the oil markets to prevent speculators from manipulating prices for their own benefit. On June 23rd, just yesterday, an Oppenheimer equity research expert, Mr. Geit, testified before the Energy Commerce Subcommittee focusing on oil price manipulation. In his words, quote, I believe the surge in crude oil price, which more than doubled in the past 12 months, was mainly due to excessive speculation and not due to an unexpected shift in market fundamentals, close quotes. His testimony and that of others, that speculative manipulation in the oil futures market is real and that by designing effective regulation of the oil markets, prices for oil may decline immediately from anywhere from 45 to $65 a barrel. Immediately, not in 10 years. Based upon all the information available today, the first and best choice for Congress is to prepare appropriate legislative and regulatory actions, which, according to experts, will drop prices dramatically in several weeks. In addition to better oversight of the oil markets, Congress must begin to invest in the development of reliable and affordable energy resources. We can do this by continuing to drill for new oil on federal lands already leased to American oil companies, even as we invest in renewable sources of energy using solar, wind, geothermal, cellulosic, and biomass, bio, biomass based technologies. And we must also ask, is it time to build new and more modern nuclear sources of electricity? By investing in these renewable energy resources, we will create millions of new higher wage jobs and develop what we've been talking about, the green economy, right here at home as we become an energy independent nation. And we cannot neglect again to mention that the OPEC kingdoms, which have been manipulating both world oil prices and supplies for years, to push back against their illegal manipulation of the oil market, I sponsored and passed major legislation that will in time bust up the oil cartels and reestablish a freely competitive marketplace to make prices reasonable once again for everyone. What is it? What is it that my colleagues on the other side have against free markets? Simply put, we cannot continue to be held hostage by OPEC and the manipulative partners in big oil. The final piece to solving the surge in oil price is the declining value of the dollar. And here you see a picture form of the dollar in 2000 when President Bush took office, declining by 38 percent in the last year. In several more months of this economic activity of borrow and spend, you'll be able to take your dollar, put it with some glue on an envelope, and use it as a postage stamp. <clears throat> Regretfully, as a direct result of President Bush's economic policy of borrow and spend, our money has lost its purchasing power. It simply doesn't stretch as far as it did before. And as a direct result of dollar light, prices for everything have gone up, not just for gasoline, but for a loaf of bread, a gallon of milk, 
and for everything we require just to survive, our rent, our mortgage payments, and our health care bills. People are screaming, it's the dollar, stupid. Prices for everything are up, but by working together we can bring about a different economic policy, different than borrow and spend. We're working hard to bring about the changes we need, and by working together we'll become an energy independent nation and make available affordable energy for all of us. The gentleman